Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today will be the end of a series that I've been doing for two weeks on how to prepare your heart. You know, I don't teach on this very often, and most people don't really like this. I guess, I don't know if it's the title or whatever, but what this is, it's a preventative thing instead of curing a problem. Most people wait and do their own thing until they get into trouble, and then they go to the Lord and get serious about, I need to be healed, I need to find out about finances or whatever. But this will prevent problems. This is about, I'm basing this on 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 14, where it talks about Rehoboam did evil because he prepared not his heart. So if you would prepare your heart, you won't do evil. You won't fall away from the Lord. And I've talked about a lot of things. Today is going to be my last day to offer all of these products, not only the teaching on how to prepare your heart, but this one on lessons from David and this one on lessons from Elijah. These are powerful, powerful teachings. And I would encourage you to, to please go to the effort to receive them. Today's our last day. So yesterday, I've been talking the last few days about imagination because over in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 18, David prayed a prayer that God would keep this in the imagination of their hearts and prepare their hearts unto thee. So that passage of Scripture is showing that part of preparing your heart and getting your heart sensitive to God to where you won't fall away from Him is to keep it in your imagination. And I've been talking about the power of imagination. Yesterday, I used this verse out of Romans chapter 1, verse 21, where it says, "...because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God." That's the first thing that you do that causes you to fall away from God. The second thing, they weren't thankful. And thankfulness is using your imagination. You know, thankfulness involves your memory. And I was making this point on the program yesterday that your imagination is how you remember things. If I say, what was your house like when you were a kid? You don't have a picture in front of you right now, but you could describe it to me. You could count the windows. You could count the doors because you can see it. It's in your imagination. That's what your imagination is. It's how you remember things. And to be thankful, you have to go back and remember what God has done for you. Remember the goodness of God. And that's powerful. Your imagination is a part of your memory. And then the third thing listed right here, it says that if you aren't glorifying God, if you aren't thankful, then your imagination just naturally becomes vain. When it says vain, it doesn't mean that it's not working, but it's working against you instead of for you. Your imagina- You can't turn your imagination off. You do have an imagination, and you use it constantly. But if you aren't using it intentionally for good, it will just automatically go towards the negative, such as when the doctor tells you that you've got cancer, your imagination will immediately see you suffering and dying the way that you've seen somebody else. If they tell you that you're going to lose your job, your imagination will immediately go negative and start seeing you suffering and doing without and stuff. Your imagination works, but it'll work against you if you leave it to itself. You have to, on purpose, use your imagination to see yourself overcoming things. That's part of preparing your heart. And then the next step here in verse 21 is that their foolish heart becomes darkened. If you don't glorify God, if you aren't thankful, if you aren't using your imagination to see yourself as a world overcomer, then your heart will become hardened and insensitive, dark towards God. Man, that's a situation none of us wants. It's important. You've got to use your imagination. And let me bring one other point out about this. Over in Psalms chapter 1, I want to talk to you about how you have to use your imagination to meditate on the Word of God. And there are so many scriptures that talk about meditation. 
YOU KNOW, AGAIN, TO THE AVERAGE PERSON, THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND WHAT THE BIBLE MEANS WHEN YOU USE THE WORD MEDITATION. A LOT OF PEOPLE, WHEN YOU SAY MEDITATION, THEY THINK OF EASTERN MEDITATION WHERE YOU SIT IN A LOTUS POSITION AND and GO OM AND YOU JUST FILL YOUR MIND WITH NOTHING. THAT'S A RECIPE FOR BECOMING DEMON-POSSESSED. THAT'S NOT GOOD. THAT'S NOT MEDITATION. THAT'S NOT THE BIBLE MEDITATION. LOOK AT THIS IN PSALMS CHAPTER 1. It SAYS, BLESSED IS THE MAN THAT WALKETH NOT IN THE COUNSEL OF THE UNGODLY, NOR STANDETH IN THE WAY OF SINNERS, NOR SITTETH IN THE SEAT OF THE SCORNFUL, BUT HIS DELIGHT IS IN THE LAW OF THE LORD, AND IN HIS LAW DOTH HE MEDITATE DAY AND NIGHT. SO THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THAT IF YOU WANT TO BE BLESSED, AND IT GOES ON TO SAY THAT THIS PERSON WHO MEDITATES IN THE LAW DAY AND NIGHT, IT SAYS, HE SHALL BE LIKE A TREE PLANTED BY THE RIVERS OF WATER THAT BRINGETH FORTH HIS FRUIT IN HIS SEASON. HIS LEAF ALSO SHALL NOT WITHER, AND WHATSOEVER HE DOETH SHALL PROSPER. IN OTHER WORDS, IF YOU WANT THE BENEFITS OF VERSE 3 WHERE YOU ARE JUST THIS TREE THAT BLOOMS AND PRODUCES FRUIT REGARDLESS OF WHAT'S GOING ON BECAUSE YOU'RE PLANTED BY THE WATER, YOUR ROOTS GO DOWN AND YOU HAVE LIFE-GIVING WATER EVEN WHEN THERE'S A DROUGHT AND ALL OF THE OTHER TREES ARE STRUGGLING AND DYING, YOU ARE STILL BRINGING FORTH FRUIT. THAT'S THE PERSON WHO MEDITATES IN THE WORD OF GOD DAY AND NIGHT. MEDITATION CAUSES YOU TO DRAW ON RESOURCES AND HAVE NOURISHMENT THAT OTHER PEOPLE THAT DON'T MEDITATE DON'T HAVE. AND AGAIN, THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT EASTERN MEDITATION. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT KEEPING YOUR MIND STAYED ON GOD. NOW, REMEMBER ALL OF THAT AND LOOK AT CHAPTER 2, PSALMS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1. IT SAYS, WHY DO THE HEATHEN RAGE AND THE PEOPLE IMAGINE A VAIN THING? WHAT I'M WANTING TO POINT OUT, DID YOU KNOW THAT THE WORD IMAGINE IN PSALMS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1 IS THE EXACT SAME HEBREW WORD THAT WAS TRANSLATED MEDITATE IN PSALMS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 2. SO I BELIEVE YOU CAN SAY THIS, THAT TO MEDITATE IN THE WORD OF GOD DAY AND NIGHT, YOU HAVE TO USE YOUR IMAGINATION. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS. I WAS TALKING ABOUT SOME OF THESE THINGS YESTERDAY WHEN I WENT ON A TOUR TO ISRAEL AND I TOOK PEOPLE AND THEY WERE JUST, YOU KNOW, OVERWHELMED. OH, THE BIBLE HAS JUST COME ALIVE. AND THEY THOUGHT IT WAS BECAUSE THERE WAS SOME ANOINTING ON THIS PLACE, ON THIS ROCK OR ON SOMETHING BECAUSE, MAN, I JUST FEEL THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD AND STUFF. IT'S NOT THAT. WHAT IT IS, THEY READ THINGS IN SCRIPTURE, BUT THEY DIDN'T MEDITATE ON IT UNTIL THEIR IMAGINATION GOT INVOLVED AND IT DIDN'T BECOME REAL TO THEM. IT WASN'T A REALITY ON THE INSIDE OF THEM. BUT WHEN THEY GO THERE AND ALL OF A SUDDEN THEY SEE IT, NOW THEY CAN PICTURE WHAT THE BIBLE WAS TALKING ABOUT. WHEN YOU GO TO THE EMPTY TOMB AND YOU SEE THAT TOMB, IT JUST MAKES THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS COME ALIVE BECAUSE NO LONGER IS IT JUST WORDS ON A PAGE THAT YOU'VE READ, BUT YOU NOW CAN SEE IT. YOU'VE GOT SOMETHING THAT YOU CAN SEE AND CONNECT WITH. WHETHER YOU REALIZE IT OR NOT, YOU THINK IN PICTURES. SOME OF YOU HAVE HEARD ME USE THIS EXAMPLE, AND SO YOU, uh, YOU KNOW, MIGHT BE ABLE TO OVERCOME THIS. BUT A PERSON THAT HASN'T HEARD, IF I JUST SAY DOG, YOU DON'T SEE D-O-G. WHAT YOU SEE IS A DOG. AND YOU WILL PROBABLY SEE IN YOUR IMAGINATION YOUR DOG or, OR YOUR NEIGHBOR'S DOG OR SOME DOG THAT YOU'VE HAD INTERACTION WITH. YOU'VE GOT A PICTURE. YOU THINK IN PICTURES. AND... WHEN I SAY BANANA, YOU SEE A BANANA. WHEN I SAY APPLE, YOU SEE AN APPLE. YOU THINK IN PICTURES. AND WORDS ARE ONLY GOOD TO THE DEGREE THAT IT PAINTS A PICTURE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. BUT YOU KNOW, YOU COULD... IF I SAID DOG, YOU COULD PICTURE YOUR DOG. MAYBE YOUR DOG IS A LITTLE WHITE POODLE. BUT I COULD CHANGE THAT PICTURE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU BY SAYING, THINK ABOUT A BIG DOG, A BIG BLACK DOG, A BIG BLACK MEAN DOG. AND IF YOU FOLLOW MY WORDS, ALL OF A SUDDEN THE PICTURE THAT YOU HAVE ON THE INSIDE CHANGES. SEE, WORDS PAINT PICTURES. AND WHEN YOU ARE SPEAKING TO PEOPLE AND TRYING TO COMMUNICATE SOMETHING AND GET THEM TO UNDERSTAND, YOU ARE A MUCH MORE EFFECTIVE COMMUNICATOR IF YOU CAN PAINT PICTURES WITH YOUR WORDS, IF YOU CAN USE ILLUSTRATIONS. THIS IS WHY JESUS CONSTANTLY WAS USING PARABLES. HE TALKED ABOUT A SOWER SOWING SEED BECAUSE ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE, IT WAS AN AGRICULTURAL SOCIETY, AND THOSE PEOPLE WERE USED TO SOWING SEEDS. THEY UNDERSTOOD THIS COMPLETELY. AND SO HE USED SOMETHING THAT HELPED PAINT A PICTURE AND SAY THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS LIKE A SEED. AND HE USED THINGS. IT HELPED COMMUNICATE. IF YOU JUST ARE PUTTING OUT WORDS 
THOSE WORDS ARE USELESS UNLESS IT ALLOWS THE PERSON TO SEE IN THEIR HEART, TO GET A PICTURE OF WHAT YOU'RE TALKING ABOUT. AND WHEN YOU'RE TALKING ABOUT VICTORY OVER SIN, OVER SICKNESS, OVER uh, FINANCES, OVER CRITICISM OF PEOPLE AND STUFF, IT'S ONE THING TO USE WORDS, BUT THOSE WORDS HAVE TO BE ABLE TO CONVEY TO PEOPLE SOMETHING THAT CHANGES THE IMAGE ON THE INSIDE. AND SO THIS IS WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT. IT SAYS YOU'RE BLESSED WHEN YOU MEDITATE IN THE WORD DAY AND NIGHT, AND THEN THAT EXACT SAME WORD WAS TRANSLATED IMAGINE IN PSALMS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 1. SO YOU ARE BLESSED WHEN YOU TAKE THE WORD OF GOD AND YOU MEDITATE ON IT. YOU MULL IT OVER. YOU THINK ABOUT IT. YOU TAKE EACH ONE OF THOSE WORDS AND YOU THINK ABOUT THEM UNTIL IT BEGINS TO START PAINTING A PICTURE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IT'S ONE THING TO KNOW THAT THE BIBLE SAYS, BY HIS STRIPES, YOU ARE HEALED. AND I I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU'VE HEARD THAT. AND IF I WAS TO ASK YOU, YOU you COULD QUOTE THAT OR YOU COULD EVEN TELL ME WHERE IT'S FOUND. ISAIAH CHAPTER 53, VERSE 5, MATTHEW 8, 17, uh, 1 PETER CHAPTER 2, VERSE 24. YOU MIGHT EVEN KNOW THE ADDRESS OF WHERE THOSE SCRIPTURES ARE AND YOU MIGHT BE ABLE TO QUOTE THOSE THINGS. BUT HAVE YOU EVER TAKEN THOSE PROMISES AND MEDITATED ON IT, THOUGHT ABOUT IT, UNTIL IT PAINTS A PICTURE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT I'M HEALED. AND I WOULD SAY, BASED ON THE NUMBER OF PEOPLE THAT I'VE DEALT WITH, THAT THERE'S MANY PEOPLE THAT KNOW WHAT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, BUT THEY STILL SEE THEMSELVES SICK. THEY TALK SICK. THAT'S THE WAY THEY THINK. WHEN THEY DREAM, THEY DREAM SICK. THAT'S THE WAY THEY SEE THEMSELVES. AND THE BIBLE SAYS, PROVERBS 23, 7, AS A MAN THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE. IT WILL BECOME A SELF-FULFILLING PROPHECY. IF YOU SEE YOURSELF SICK, YOU'RE GOING TO STAY SICK, EVEN THOUGH YOU MAY KNOW WHAT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS AND YOU MAY PRAY AND YOU MAY ASK SOMEBODY ELSE TO PRAY FOR YOU, BUT YOU WILL BE THE WAY YOU SEE YOURSELF BEING. YOU KNOW, WAY BACK, uh, THIS IS BACK PROBABLY IN THE 80s, I WOULD REMEMBER READING JOHN CHAPTER 14, VERSE 12, WHERE JESUS WAS SPEAKING TO HIS DISCIPLES, AND HE SAID, VERILY, VERILY, THE WORDS VERILY, VERILY MEANS TRULY, TRULY. EVERYTHING JESUS SAID WAS TRUE, BUT WHEN HE HAD TO START IT BY SAYING, I'M TELLING YOU THE TRUTH, I'M TELLING YOU THE TRUTH, IT WAS BECAUSE HE WAS ABOUT TO SAY SOMETHING THAT WAS SO ASTOUNDING, SO uh, HARD TO BELIEVE, THAT they, THEY WOULD HAVE THOUGHT, SURELY I MISUNDERSTOOD THIS. HE COULDN'T MEAN WHAT HE SAID. SO HE STARTED BY SAYING, TRULY, TRULY, VERILY, VERILY, I SAY UNTO YOU, HE THAT BELIEVES ON ME, WELL, I BELIEVE ON HIM. HE SAYS, HE THAT BELIEVES ON ME, THE WORKS THAT I DO SHALL HE DO ALSO, AND GREATER WORKS THAN THESE SHALL HE DO, BECAUSE I GO UNTO MY FATHER. AND I REMEMBER READING THAT. I'VE, I've READ THAT MANY TIMES, BUT I REMEMBER BACK IN THE 80s READING THAT AND JUST, YOU KNOW, PUTTING THE BIBLE DOWN AND THINKING ABOUT IT. MEDITATING IS WHAT I WAS DOING. AND I WAS SAYING, FATHER, I BELIEVE ON YOU, BUT I HAVEN'T SEEN THE DEAD RAISED. I HADN'T SEEN THE BLIND EYES OPEN. I HADN'T SEEN ALL OF THESE THINGS HAPPEN. AND SO SOMETHING'S WRONG. AND I STARTED SAYING, I BELIEVE. I'M GOING TO START BELIEVING TO SEE THE DEAD RAISED. THAT'S WHAT I FOCUSED ON. AND I TOOK EVERY SCRIPTURE IN THE BIBLE WHERE A PERSON WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD OR WHERE IT PROPHESIED US RAISING PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD, LIKE MATTHEW CHAPTER 10, VERSE 8. AND I TOOK THOSE VERSES AND I WROTE THEM OUT LONGHAND, AND THEN I STUDIED THEM. AND I, I SAW, LIKE WHEN uh, JOHN CHAPTER 11, WHEN JESUS RAISED LAZARUS FROM THE DEAD, I DIDN'T JUST READ THAT STORY, BUT I READ IT, AND THEN I'D CLOSE MY BIBLE, AND I'D SIT THERE WITH MY EYES CLOSED AND JUST TRY AND SEE THIS IN MY HEART. I TRIED TO IMAGINE WHAT IT WOULD HAVE BEEN LIKE WITH MARY AND MARTHA SITTING THERE CRYING, WITH THE DISCIPLES THINKING THAT THIS IS A HOPELESS SITUATION, DOZENS OF PEOPLE AROUND THAT WERE WONDERING WHY HE DIDN'T COME. AND I WOULD JUST MEDITATE ON THIS UNTIL I WOULD SEE ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND THEN I WOULD SEE JESUS HAVING HIM ROLL THE STONE AWAY AND THEN WITH A LOUD VOICE SAYING, LAZARUS, COME FORTH. I ALSO TOOK THE EXAMPLE WHERE uh, ELIJAH, YOU KNOW, LAID ON TOP OF THE BOY AND PUT HIS HANDS ON HIS HANDS AND HIS FEET ON HIS FEET AND HIS MOUTH ON HIS MOUTH AND LAID THERE. AND THEN HE PRAYED OVER HIM AND GOT UP AND WALKED AND CAME BACK AND HE WAXED WARM AND FINALLY THE BOY WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD. I SAW THOSE THINGS UNTIL I COULD GET A PICTURE OF WHAT IT MUST HAVE BEEN LIKE FOR THEM TO DO IT. AND THEN I STARTED NOT ONLY FOCUSING ON JESUS RAISING LAZARUS AND 
YOU KNOW, ELIJAH RAISING THE BOY FROM THE DEAD, BUT I STARTED SEEING MYSELF DO IT BECAUSE HE SAID I WOULD DO THE SAME WORKS THAT HE DID. AND SO I STARTED SEEING MYSELF STAND IN FRONT OF A TOMB AND COMMAND SOMEBODY WHO HAD BEEN DEAD FOR FOUR DAYS TO COME BACK TO LIFE. YOU KNOW WHAT THAT IS? THAT'S IMAGINATION. IT'S NOT FANTASY BECAUSE IT'S BASED ON SCRIPTURE. IT'S BASED ON A PROMISE THAT GOD GAVE US. AND I STARTED DOING THESE THINGS. I WOULD LAY ON A BED AND ACT LIKE I WAS DOING WHAT ELIJAH DID. I WAS IMAGINING. AND YOU KNOW, it got, I GOT TO WHERE I WAS FOCUSED ON THIS SO MUCH THAT ACTUALLY DURING MY DREAMS, AT NIGHT, I WOULD RAISE 10 OR 15 PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD EVERY SINGLE NIGHT. I'D DREAM ABOUT IT. I WAS JUST SO FOCUSED ON IT THAT I WAS DREAMING ABOUT IT. I WAS MEDITATING ON IT. THAT'S WHAT IT SAYS. YOU'RE BLESSED WHEN YOU MEDITATE IN IT DAY AND NIGHT, AND TO MEDITATE MEANS TO IMAGINE. SO I STARTED IMAGINING THESE THINGS BEING REAL. AND IT WASN'T LONG AFTER THAT UNTIL A MAN DIED IN ONE OF MY SERVICES. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? BECAUSE I HAD BEEN IMAGINING, BECAUSE I'D BEEN THERE IN MY MIND, BECAUSE I HAD SEEN MYSELF DOING IT, I SPOKE TO THIS MAN, AND THIS MAN CAME BACK TO LIFE, AND HE WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD. AND THEN IT WAS, I DON'T KNOW, 15 YEARS LATER OR SOMETHING, AND I HAD SEEN A COUPLE OF OTHER PEOPLE MIRACULOUSLY RAISED UP. PEOPLE THAT I HAD MINISTERED TO HAD RAISED OTHER PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD. BUT I GOT TO THINKING I HADN'T SEEN THIS IN A LONG TIME. AND SO I STARTED THE PROCESS ALL OVER AGAIN. I JUST STARTED STUDYING ABOUT RAISING PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD, AND I TOOK THOSE SCRIPTURES AND I MEDITATED ON IT UNTIL I COULD SEE IT. I COULD PICTURE IT. AND THEN I STARTED PICTURING MYSELF DOING IT, AND THEN I MEDITATED ON IT SO MUCH THAT AT NIGHT I WOULD DREAM ABOUT RAISING PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD, AND IT WASN'T LONG AFTER THAT, IN uh, 2001, I THINK IT WAS, THAT I SAW MY SON RAISED FROM THE DEAD, WHO HAD BEEN DEAD FOR FOUR OR FIVE HOURS, WAS IN A MORGUE, PRONOUNCED DEAD, TOE TAG ON, STRIPPED NAKED, AND I SAW HIM RAISED FROM THE DEAD WITH NO BRAIN DAMAGE. There's, THOSE THINGS AREN'T COINCIDENTAL. THERE'S A REASON WHY SOME PEOPLE SEE THESE THINGS COME TO PASS. AND I'M TELLING YOU, IT'S BECAUSE WE'RE DOING what, WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT RIGHT HERE, HOW TO PREPARE YOUR HEART. YOU HAVE TO DO THIS IN ADVANCE. YOU CAN'T JUST BE OUT HERE GOOFING OFF AND NOT SEEKING GOD AND NOT STUDYING THE WORD AND NOT DOING ALL OF THESE THINGS, AND THEN SOME CRISIS HITS AND BOOM, ALL OF A SUDDEN, YOU JUST SEE THE MIRACULOUS POWER OF GOD WORK. NO, YOU HAVE TO PREPARE YOUR HEART. YOU HAVE TO BE READY IN ADVANCE. YOU HAVE TO BE FOCUSED ON THESE THINGS. AND THIS IS THE POINT THAT I'M TRYING TO GET ACROSS TO YOU, THAT MOST CHRISTIANS DON'T PREPARE THEIR HEART. MOST CHRISTIANS JUST GO THROUGH LIFE, AND AS LONG AS THERE'S NOT ANY CRISIS THAT'S GOING ON, THEY BASICALLY DO THEIR OWN THING. THEY DON'T SEEK THE LORD. THEY DON'T PRAY. THEY DON'T, don't GO TO CHURCH. THEY MAY HAVE SOME TOKEN RITUALS THAT THEY GO THROUGH, BUT THEIR FOCUS ISN'T ON GOD. AS IT SAYS OVER IN PSALMS CHAPTER 10, I USE THOSE VERSES ALREADY, THAT GOD ISN'T IN ALL OF THEIR THOUGHTS. THEY AREN'T SEEKING GOD WITH THEIR WHOLE HEART. MOST PEOPLE DO NOT SEEK GOD UNTIL THEY'RE ALREADY IN A CRISIS, AND THAT'S ONE OF THE REASONS THEY HAVE SO MANY CRISIS. BUT YOU CAN GET TO WHERE YOU SEEK GOD WITH YOUR WHOLE HEART. GOD IS IN ALL OF YOUR THOUGHTS. YOU'RE TAKING THE WORD. YOU'RE MEDITATING ON THE PROMISES. THESE THINGS ARE BECOMING REAL TO YOU, AND YOU SEE YOURSELF AS A VICTOR INSTEAD OF A VICTIM. AND WHEN THOSE THINGS BECOME REAL, AND it's a, IT'S a PROCESS. IT DOESN'T JUST AUTOMATICALLY HAPPEN LIKE THAT, BUT IT'S A PROCESS. AND AS YOU DO THIS, IT BECOMES CLEARER AND CLEARER. IT BECOMES MORE AND MORE IN FOCUS, AND EVENTUALLY YOU GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE YOU IDENTIFY MORE WITH VICTORY AND THE HEALTH AND THE PROSPERITY AND THE JOY AND THE PEACE THAT GOD PROMISES THAN YOU DO THAN THE SICKNESS AND THE POVERTY AND THE DEPRESSION AND THE LONELINESS AND ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS. YOU GET TO WHERE YOU SEE YOURSELF THIS WAY, AND IT BECOMES A SELF-FULFILLING PROPHECY. AS THE MAN THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE, PROVERBS 23, 7. SO WHAT I'M SHARING WITH YOU, THIS IS SO POWERFUL. YOU CAN FOCUS ON THE THINGS OF GOD. WHEN EVERYTHING IS GOOD IS THE BEST TIME TO BUILD YOUR HOUSE. DON'T WAIT UNTIL THE STORM HAS COME AND THE WIND IS BLOWING AND THE RAIN IS COMING AND THERE'S A FLOOD. DON'T WAIT UNTIL THEN TO BUILD YOUR HOUSE, BUT BUILD IT WHEN THE SUN IS OUT AND WHEN IT'S GOOD. WHEN EVERYTHING IS GOING GOOD, YOU NEED TO COMMIT YOURSELF TO SEEKING GOD WITH YOUR WHOLE HEART, AND YOU NEED TO PREPARE YOUR HEART IN ADVANCE AND AND SET BOUNDS AND LIMITS THAT I WILL NOT GO HERE. THIS IS CONTRARY TO WHAT GOD TOLD ME. THAT'S OUTSIDE OF THE uh, BOUNDARIES. I'M NOT GOING OVER THERE. 
AND YOU JUST SET THESE BOUNDARIES THAT I'M NOT GOING TO THESE PLACES. YOU PREDETERMINE IT. AND THEN WHEN YOU FIND YOURSELF IN A SITUATION WHERE IT SEEMS LIKE ALL HELL IS BROKEN OUT AND ALL OF THESE PRESSURES ARE ON YOU TRYING TO TEMPT YOU TO, YOU KNOW, WALK AWAY IN FEAR uh, AND NOT STAND FOR WHAT GOD HAS TOLD YOU TO DO, YOU CAN'T DO IT BECAUSE YOU'VE ALREADY PREDETERMINED. YOU'VE ALREADY SET YOUR HEART. IT'S FIXED. IT'S ESTABLISHED. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THAT'S A GREAT WAY TO LIVE. THAT'S AN AWESOME WAY TO LIVE. BUT A PERSON WHO SAYS, WELL, I WANT TO SERVE GOD, BUT IT JUST DEPENDS ON WHAT IT'S GOING TO COST ME. IT DEPENDS ON HOW MUCH RIDICULE, HOW MUCH CRITICISM I'M GOING TO GET, HOW MUCH EFFORT IT TAKES. AND I WOULD LIKE TO DO THIS, BUT IT JUST DEPENDS ON THE CIRCUMSTANCES. I CAN GUARANTEE YOU VERY, VERY, VERY FEW, NEARLY NEGLIGIBLE AMOUNT OF PEOPLE ARE GOING TO REACH THE RIGHT SPOT WITH THAT KIND OF AN ATTITUDE. WHAT YOU'VE GOT TO DO IS JUST SAY, NO, I, THIS IS WHO I AM. THIS IS WHAT GOD CALLED ME TO DO, AND THIS IS WHAT I WILL DO. I WILL FINISH MY COURSE. I WILL OBTAIN WHAT GOD TOLD ME TO DO. AND YOU TAKE SCRIPTURES AND PROMISES AND YOU MEDITATE ON THAT. GET YOUR IMAGINATION INVOLVED TO THE POINT THAT YOU SEE YOURSELF WINNING. YOU SEE YOURSELF SUCCEEDING. THAT'S WHEN YOU'RE GOING TO WIN. I'VE HEARD PEOPLE WHO ARE OLYMPIAN uh, ATHLETES USE THIS SAME THING. OF COURSE, THEY AREN'T APPLIED IT IN A SPIRITUAL REALM. THEY'RE TALKING ABOUT JUST SOMETHING PHYSICAL. BUT THEY HAVE TO SEE THEMSELVES BREAKING THAT TAPE AND WINNING THE RACE. THEY HAVE TO SEE THEMSELVES STANDING ON THE PODIUM WITH, YOU KNOW, THE GOLD MEDAL OR THE SILVER OR THE BRONZE MEDAL. THEY HAVE TO SEE THEMSELVES A WINNER. IF THEY CAN'T SEE IT, THEY WON'T OBTAIN IT. AND WHEN YOU SEE IT, ONCE YOU GET THAT IMAGE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, IT ALLOWS YOU TO DISCIPLINE YOURSELF, TO DENY YOURSELF, IT ALLOWS YOU TO LIVE DIFFERENTLY THAN OTHER PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, I CAN SAY THIS IN MY OWN LIFE, THAT GOD HAS GIVEN ME A VISION FOR THIS CARIS BIBLE COLLEGE ABOUT BUILDING THINGS, ABOUT DOING THINGS, AND I'M FOCUSED ON THIS, AND I SEE MYSELF DOING THESE THINGS, AND IT KEEPS ME GOING. IF I DIDN'T HAVE A VISION OUT IN FRONT OF ME, IF I HAD NO GOALS, IF I WAS SHOOTING AT NOTHING, I'D HIT IT EVERY TIME. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? IF I WAS SHOOTING AT NOTHING, I GUARANTEE YOU IT WOULD BE HARDER FOR ME TO MAINTAIN MY SPIRITUAL EQUILIBRIUM AND KEEP THINGS GOING. HAVING A GOAL, KNOWING SOMETHING, WHEN I SEE MYSELF ACCOMPLISHING THESE THINGS THAT GOD HAS TOLD ME TO DO, IT MOTIVATES ME. IT GIVES ME INSPIRATION TO BE ABLE TO GET UP AND FOCUS AND TO DO THINGS. EVERYTHING I'M TALKING ABOUT RIGHT HERE IS A PART OF PREPARING YOUR HEART. THIS IS A SERIES THAT IS REALLY POWERFUL, AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU EVERY SINGLE PERSON WATCHING THIS NEEDS IT. SAD TO SAY, NOT VERY MANY PEOPLE WILL TAKE ADVANTAGE OF IT BECAUSE THEY THINK, WELL, I HEARD YOU. IT'S OKAY. IT'S ONE THING FOR YOU TO HEAR THIS, BUT YOU HAVE TO med to MEDITATE MEANS YOU GO OVER AND OVER AND OVER. IT'S LIKE A COW CHEWING ITS CUD. YOU JUST, YOU DON'T JUST SWALLOW AT ONE TIME. YOU JUST DIGEST IT AND THEN SPIT IT BACK UP AND GO THROUGH IT, AND YOU'D GO UNTIL YOU JUST BREAK ALL OF THE NUTRIENTS OUT OF THAT THAT THERE IS TO GET. YOU NEED TO GO OVER THIS. PLUS, THIS IS A GREAT WAY TO SHARE THIS TRUTH WITH OTHER PEOPLE, IS TO GET THIS. AND YOU COULD TELL PEOPLE AND SAY, LOOK, I'VE HEARD IT AND IT'S BLESSED ME, BUT I, I'M NOT SURE I COULD SAY IT THE SAME WAY. WHY DON'T YOU LISTEN TO THIS? YOU COULD BE THE TOOL THAT GOD USES TO TOUCH SOMEBODY ELSE. AND REMEMBER THAT WE'VE ALSO GOT A PACKAGE DEAL GOING, AND WE'VE GOT THIS BOOK ON LESSONS FROM ELIJAH AND LESSONS FROM DAVID THAT YOU COULD REQUEST THIS PACKAGE DEAL AND GET THESE BOOKS. AND THIS BASICALLY COVERS A LOT OF THE SAME THINGS. I DRAW THESE TRUES OUT FROM THEIR LIFE AND HOW THEY USED IT. AND I TELL YOU, THIS WOULD BE A BLESSING TO YOU. REMEMBER THAT TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO OFFER THESE MATERIALS HERE ON OUR TELEVISION PROGRAM. SO IF YOU'RE GOING TO RECEIVE THESE MATERIALS, PLEASE GO TO THE EFFORT TO WRITE OUR CALL TODAY. ANDREW'S TEACHING, HOW TO PREPARE YOUR HEART, IS AVAILABLE AS A CD OR DVD ALBUM MADE FROM OUR DAILY TELEVISION BROADCAST. EACH OF THESE VALUABLE RESOURCES ARE AVAILABLE FOR A GIFT OF ANY AMOUNT WHEN YOU CONTACT US. THIS ENTIRE SERIES IS ALSO AVAILABLE FOR AUDIO DOWNLOAD ABSOLUTELY FREE FROM OUR WEBSITE. YOU CAN GET THIS TEACHING IN THE HOW TO PREPARE YOUR HEART PACKAGE, WHICH INCLUDES YOUR CHOICE OF EITHER THE CD OR DVD ALBUM FROM THE HOW TO PREPARE YOUR HEART SERIES, AS WELL AS TWO BOOKS, LESSONS FROM ELIJAH AND LESSONS FROM DAVID. THIS PACKAGE HAS A CATALOG VALUE OF $50, BUT TODAY YOU CAN RECEIVE THESE VALUABLE RESOURCES 
for just $35. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these teachings. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. And we encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. This is the last day we'll be offering this teaching, so be sure to respond today. Many of you know that we have built a 1,022 space parking garage to accommodate all of our people that come to our facilities in Woodland Park. And it was at a $23 million cost and we are trying to get that paid off as quickly as we can. Though I felt like the Lord spoke to me about encouraging 23,000 people to give a $1,000 offering, either a one-time gift or pledged out over a period of 10 months, $100 per month. If you would like to be a part of that, I encourage you to call or write, go to our website and join our 1K Club. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline 24 hours a day, five days a week, Monday through Friday, at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse on how our friends and partners are changing lives all around the world. Lives like Michael Schutz. All throughout his early childhood, Michael struggled with extreme food allergies and asthma. That is, until his parents found Andrew's teachings and healing journeys and learned for the first time ever that God wanted him well. I would watch video after video. I just knew, I'm like, if they are free from their ailments, <laughs> then my son can be free. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Schutzes stood on the promise that by the stripes of Jesus, their son was already healed, and within a few months, he had no more symptoms. Today, Michael is a healthy, athletic teenager who eats whatever he wants. To see his full healing journey, visit awmi.net today. Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, God already had determined a purpose for your life, a God-given purpose. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis! The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. If you sit under the Word for four hours a day, for five days a week, for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. Every one of you are created for a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is?